just uh, we're going to get started here. We are climbing here to uh, almost a thousand callers here. We're at 926 uh, attendees and climbing. But without any further ado, we're going to get started. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone for join joining us uh, for this webinar here today. Uh, we, we know that there's a lot going on in your personal lives and a lot of you are concerned of what, what is happening, uh, what is happening to the economy, what is happening with this outbreak, the virus, and you know, what are other people thinking about? What are they doing? Are, are, am I like, are you, you know, as an attendee, are you like one of the only people that are concerned? Are you living in fear? What, I mean, there's so many things. And, you know, I appreciate and I am really honored that so many of you have reached out to my office and to my wife, Arlene, and I, and, and, uh, and you know, whether it's through, you know, direct message on Facebook or Instagram or email, text messages. And for those of you I've had the opportunity to talk to face to face and we're, we, we, we are so honored that we, um, can be of some value to you that we can provide some information and give you an idea of what we're going through. What is the Shin family experiencing right now? And what, what are we talking about on a daily basis? And, uh, you know, I, I thought, you know, last week I had a wonderful call with many of you, and, and here we are today, a week later, we're, we're, I've got a very special guest on this uh, webinar, a man that I uh, truly, truly look up to. There's not a whole lot of people, I, I, less than what I can count, uh, the, the number of people on my hand, uh, on my right hand, are the people who have had such an impact in my life, obviously my mother, my father, um, you know, my martial arts master, um, and uh, just a couple other people. And one of those individuals is here on this call right now and I have uh, tremendous respect for in just every aspect of his life and who he is and who he's become. Uh, you know, when you look at from a business standpoint and what he has created over the last 30 years and building probably the most powerful, uh, the largest financial distribution system in North America today. I mean, whether you, you could size it up to Merrill Lynch and all the other financial companies, New York Life, uh, the man that you're all going about to hear from has built literally the largest financial distribution system in America today. <clears throat> if we had more time, you would understand the sacrifices he made in the early part of his career, both he and his wife, Cindy, and, uh, and where, what, where, where that whole sacrifice and the risk that they took and where it took you know, families uh, that they have changed, like our family, uh, and, and thousands of others. I mean, hundreds of thousands of others. And, uh, and so that, from a business standpoint, I mean, his philanthropy, his, his donations, and his stewardship in all areas, whether it be in his church and, and his leadership, and what he's done in his church, what he's done in his family, what he's done in his, what he has done in his, his community. Uh, the man has just given and given and given. And uh, I am really so honored to have him on this call tonight. You know, uh, in our, our uh, marketing campaign that we put a flyer out, it says, who mentors the mentors? And below it, we said, hear from the man who mentored me. I'm not an easy guy to mentor. I mean, I'm a, I'm a tough cookie, you know, I'm a bit stubborn. I mean, I'll, uh, I don't think I was very coachable at the very beginning of my career, but uh, I have to see proof in the pudding. I'm not going to let any man or any woman really influence me unless I see proof in the pudding. And certainly um, this family, this couple, this man, who you're going to hear from over the next hour is one of those guys. And so without any further ado, I'd like to welcome to this webinar my good friend, my mentor, my business coach, partner, uh, Rich Stolle. So, Rich, are you there? I am, John, and I'm excited to be here. How's my audio? Oh, you sound great. You come out very strong and clear. All right. <clears throat> um, am I just working off audio now? There won't be a there won't be a picture. Um. The the uh. Yeah. Just audio. Unless you have a PowerPoint or something. Unless you're going to no, be speaking mainly. No. No. We're mainly. good. We're good. I'm just okay. fine, John. Okay. Great. So. But I can I can see you. So that's good. That makes my day. That's sexy little beard you got working on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little gray in that one too. 
I'd welcome to the Silver. club. Yeah. Silver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's good to be with you all. There's 1,011 people on here right at this moment. And um, I consider it a privilege to talk to you. You know, years and years ago, don't worry about it. Years and years ago, I figured, uh, I figured out that when I was talking to a group that I needed to get my head in the right place and, and being in the right place meant that I wasn't, that it wasn't about me and about their impression of me that was important. It was kind of what kind of job did I do and getting a message to their hearts and their minds that caused them to be reflecting inwardly not worrying about how impressed they were with any with the speaker, but how impressed they were with their desire to change. And so I hope we spend some time here talking, um, and I won't take a long time. Um, John said I have that over the next 16 hours that we need to cover a range of things between here and noon tomorrow. Um, we're going to see there's 1,010 on here. We've already lost one. No, the 11th one just came back. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, we'll see how many of you are left 16 hours from now. Um, but don't worry about that too much because I won't be left 16 hours from now. But I want to talk to you about a perspective that I shared with the company and the all company call that we had. Actually, it was a leadership call, SMD and up call a couple of weeks ago. And that I've been sharing with the team. And then there's some challenges I want to extend in relation to that. I've got my webinar tomorrow. Um, at the regular time at nine, the second Wednesday of the month and at 9 a.m. Pacific. And I'll talk more about it then in more detail and how the PowerPoint and, and pictures up. But right now, I just want to spend a few minutes reflecting on my career um, as it relates to your career right now um, and the lessons that I've learned. Years ago, um, it was actually a, a our church's general conference, which they held uh, after 9-11, after September 11, 2001. And of course, the country was in commotion. We'd had the first attack on U.S. soil um, since 1812, if you can believe that, since 1812. And, and we were in an uproar. You know, we'd started, we'd sent teams into the Middle East to get after those bases, those terrorist bases, and all those things were going on in Afghanistan and Iraq, and, and the economy had taken a major downturn, and you know people were panicked, the pl planes weren't flying. It was, a, it was a challenging time, and, and one of our senior leaders in our church stood up, and, and, and in a very calming way, looked at us and said, and, you know, I want to tell you a little bit of the story that uh, maybe has a tiny bit in common with today. He said it was a terrible thing that happened to us, watching these two planes fly into the World Trade Center, losing the lives of the people on the plane, killing a couple of thousand people that did there. He says the plane that crashed into the Pentagon, the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania, you know, these good lives lost. He says it was a terrible thing. But he said, and I want to share with you a little bit of my perspective. I'm saddened by this. We pray for those who are left behind, the families who have lost cherished loved ones, fathers, mothers, children. At the same time, I want to reflect on a moment in my life when I was flying in my aircraft at war in World War II in the Pacific Theater. And I was, you know, one, one fighter pilot among thousands, among hundreds of thousands and millions because the entire world was at war. We were losing thousands and thousands of people every day. Millions and millions and millions of people lost their lives in that terrible conflict almost every nation except for a few neutral nations was at war with other nations. My plane got shot down. I was lucky to be fished out of the Pacific after a few days. I recovered physically and then I was back in a plane and I was back at war. <clears throat> that conflict lasted years. 
you know, as opposed to the conflict we faced that technically lasted literally just a few hours. And as terrible as it was, and as much as we have to cope with, it's important to have perspective. I never forget, I never forgot the feelings that gave me and the perspective it gave me. In a much lesser of a way, a, a perhaps a minor way, though this is still a crazy time um, and a terrible time. And we are losing good people and other people going through the tear of the disease and the, and the pain of it. You know, the reality is, is that uh, we look at our nation. I mean, I, I'm privileged to live in a community, Pebble Beach. I'm speaking to you from my studio on Pebble Beach. Um, my you know, couple of our children live here and, and our grandchildren live with their, my daughter and son-in-law in Carmel. And we are blessed with the reality that we do not have one COVID-19 case in either one of our communities, not one. Monterey County doesn't have much. And we're a little less populated of a county. We're certainly not jammed together like New York, which was, ended up being a terrible place to be. Um, and we've always heard it would be if, if there was some kind of outbreak like this in a pandemic. But the fact is we don't have to worry about our ch losing our children to this disease. We're not worried about losing the millennials to this disease. And we're not having to worry about losing even that many baby boomers to this disease. Some but not many, um, but we've watched other things happen, but still because we have to protect our elderly and protect, I'm elderly, by the way, I'm still be 68 in, in June, I guess technically, I'm in that, that risk group um, and we're paying attention to that and we're staying safe and other people are being respectful of our situation, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for this, the great blessing of this company and this business that allows us to keep communicating, to keep building, to keep growing, you know, and I, and from the perspective that, and I'm not going to go back through my entire career because I started in this business in the recession of the early eighties. We started WMA, which is the forerunner company, WFG in the recession of the nineties, right? Then we went, we started, we started WFG in June, we started, we closed that deal with Transamerica, and then we got 9-11 a few months later, you know, and, and we'd recovered from that. We got 2008, and I'm just going to use 2008 as an example. So there's 2008. We'd done some really stupid stuff in, in the mortgage business, in the real estate business, in the housing business. The companies had built mortgage-backed securities and and they were a mess and they weren't sound and wow, things collapsed. And we lot from, from trough to tr trough, from high point to trough in, in the fall of 19, I mean, in 2008, we lost 50% of the market wealth. Basically 50% of us wealth disappeared in a matter of weeks. Now we haven't had it that bad with this It's dramatic. You know, we lost, we had some crazy days where the market was down 2,300 points in one day. Just like we had crazy days just back up 1,900 points in one day. So the volatility is unprecedented. 2008 just went down, 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 down. But it, it wasn't doing this wild gyration bounce stuff. And then it stopped and then it steadily worked its way back up from that low point. In fact, it gained almost 10% of that loss gain at, at the last few days of uh, 2008 in December. But we've got this uncertainty revolving around the virus and stuff, and it's been, been a crazy time. But what happens to our business model when we have really, really bad times? The reality is the greatest enemy of our success in the marketplace is complacency with the consumer. That's the greatest enemy or complacency on the part of the team or on the part of people we're trying to recruit. And so we have people drifting and they're complacent. And I want you to just focus on 12 to 14 months ago. And so we go back, let's go back to January of 2019. What's happening in the market? We're beginning a tremendous year that's gonna be a tremendous run in the marketplace right? The market had been up for two plus years at that point. Um, 
Trump had lowered regulation, all this kind of stuff. Business was moving and things were really, really good. And we had a good first quarter this time last year in WFG, as you would expect, right? The whole marketplace doing good. We had a good year in 20, a really good year in 2019. And you know, that great first quarter. And yet here we are with all this stuff hitting, starting to hit in December, accelerating through January, February, here to March. California, you're right, hits their heart, hits Washington, hits New York, these centers of things, of course, going crazy in Europe. And what happened? Well, first, this first quarter, final numbers, looking at it right now, we're up over 50% in net points the first quarter of this year over the first quarter of last year. So our business, our overall company business is up 50% this quarter over the same quarter last year, which is stunning. You think that's true of many companies right now? You think that's true of many restaurants you know? Or are these all these other kinds of businesses out there? You know, now the food business, right? The stores are doing okay because people are running on Costco and people are running on Safeway. But outside of that, almost everybody's taking it on the chin. Again, market down about 40%. You know, it was high, what, 28, 29, got down to 18. Crazy losses, right? It's up some above that now. But the reality is market's down. Business is down. People are sheltering in place on a nationwide basis. I heard they were the police were citing people who were on the beach in San Diego today, writing them citations, fining them for being out, for being away from their houses. Crazy. Good news is we have, you know, I won't tell you any more good news about that from our side. Who cares? Right? But people have it tough. It's been a freaky time for a lot of folks. So recruiting's got to be down, right? Because everybody's hiding. Well, sorry to tell you, but AMAs are up almost 90%, like 89%. The first quarter, again, this quarter over the first quarter of last year. And we recruited great last year, right? And yet our recruiting is up. Everything is up. So we got a market, I wish you could see me, is going down. My hand's going down, right? Almost straight down. And we're going almost straight up. I'm telling you, and a lot of other people with some experience can tell you this. I mean, I started my business part-time in 1980, and the federal loan rate to banks, in other words, their interest rate, the Fed rate was at 21%, which is unimaginable for most of you. 21%, which means if you were going out to buy a house, you'd be at 23, 24%. So obviously, nobody was buying a house. I mean, that's nuts, right? What that was. It got to the point where the 15 year note, the 30, excuse me, the 30 year note, treasury note, which is their longest one, a 30 year note, which I think is right now at one point something or two, was at 15%. You, if you bought that treasury note, your money was guaranteed to earn 15% for 30 years. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And people were so freaked out, not enough people were buying those because they didn't know how bad it was going to get. In 1980s, we had something, the combination of two terrible things, a very stagnant economy, a strong recession, and spiraling inflation. Our country had never experienced both at the same time. Usually a stagnant economy, right, is you get the opposite. Prices come down. But we had a stagnant economy, and prices were going up. The money supply was up. And so the Federal Reserve had to take this dramatic action and raise the rate. What's the rate in our country right now to loan rate the banks? Between zero and a half a percent. I mean, most of it's at a quarter percent to banks right now. 25 hundredths of a percent. Unbelievable. And I, we started our business to pay off our Visa card and get our couch, you know, when loan rates right? We're 22, 23. And everything was, everybody was, was wigging back then too. And three years later, we had a million in savings selling term insurance. And then we start the business in the nineties, another recession. That's when we started WMA. We left the company we're with, started a brand new company. We were worried about that. How was it going to be the recession slowed down? 
and we rock. A couple of years later, I'm out earning my best year in that previous company, the previous 11 years, by two times. It worked up to three times, right? Then we come to 2001. We've grown so much. We know we need a special partnership. We entered into the deal with Transamerica. We launched WFG in June of, of, uh, of 2001. Hoping we, right, this thing's going to work out, that this partnership makes sense. We get 9-11. That's crazy. And what happens? My income doubles again, right? Bad times are what we are made for. And you've got to understand that. If you're sitting around immobilized watching the news, because you understand we got two viruses, two terrible viruses. We have COVID-19. That's a terrible virus. We've got another terrible virus called 24-hour news that is almost 99% negative. The end of the world. Boy, did the news, all the news, cable news networks love the terrible projection. A million people are going to die and all this stuff. Well, it's not met anywhere near those projections. The loss of every person's one too many, and it's a tragedy, and we all hate it. But we'd hate it a lot more if they're projected, those things that they are, those models they were showing us to freak us all out, because you got to remember these, these companies make money through it, selling advertising, right? Advertising space. And they're able to charge for their advertising space according to how many people are watching. So they have obviously chosen fear and conflict and all of that stuff. You know, that's what they do, right? They're not showing you pictures of puppies and happy families and well, look at this kindness that's done over here in the world, a beautiful place. No, it's all this disaster and this fight, this fight and that fight and these people hating on each other and yelling at each other. That's what they do. You can't watch that stuff all the time. That gives you the negative virus, right? The NGV. And you combine the NGV with some real trials in the world. And next thing you know, right? You're hiding in your closet. You're in kind of a mental coma, psychically. And if you've been indulging in that, I want to encourage you to snap out of it because that's not, that's not where we're at. We are certainly going to get through this thing and beat this thing. There's no doubt about it. And it could have been so much worse than it is. But the reality is our company, our business model was built for these times. That's how come we're up 50% in net points. That's how come we're up about 90% in recruiting. You know, you know why? Because just like at the end of 2008, because what happened after 2008? 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, the next six years were the best years of our business model's history. We had a year in there, a couple of years after 09, after 08, that where we grew as a company, a hundred percent in production, a hundred percent. Recruiting was more than that. I remember a couple of years later, we dropped all the way down to 35% and we were depressed. A hundred percent, a company our size doubled in a year after a terrible time in the marketplace. Why? What's the psychology behind it? The psychology is this. Everybody freaks out. No one's feeling complacent. They're full of doubt and fear and worry. And every one of them's wishing right now, just like all of you, just like everybody out in the marketplace. Man, I wish I had more money saved. Man, I wish I'd saved my money in a better place, safer place, more conservative place. Man, I wish I'd listen to that guy when he's talking about Index Universal Life that gave me upside chance, but guaranteed, had a guarantee in a floor. I wish I'd listened to those guys who talked to me about some of that annuity stuff. I wish I'd listened to them about lower volatility strategies, but I was just too busy thinking how great life is, drifting along, right? Got my job, restaurant's doing good, my dry cleaner's doing good, whatever the heck it is that was doing good. And now all of them, I mean, how many people wish they had just 10,000 more in savings, much less 25 or 50 or 100 or 200,000? How many of them wish their loved ones were better insured? 
or insured at all. Wow. So look, if you don't have understand how much the mindset has changed in the last few weeks in the marketplace, this opportunity is passing you by. Your mindset needs to adjust to fit the mindset, the new mindset in the marketplace. Just like we were going, oh, woe is me in 2008. A lot of people in the company, and that's me slapping them. And I was slapping people. I said, snap out of it. This is the golden era these next few years. You can experience the kind of growth these next two, three years that it'd take you a decade. And we have entered, I believe, with everything that's in me, another season just like that right now. We'll get a vaccine for this thing. They're getting treatments for this thing. All this stuff will get handled. This virus will get beat, right? May pop up a little bit again in the late fall or winter, but we'll be a lot more ready with social distancing and everything else. You have a lot more people immune, a lot of treatments in place. Bottom line is a ton more people are gonna wish they had second income and they're ready to listen and a ton more people wish they had their act together financially, had set goals and were working toward it and were doing smart things and they don't know where to find it. Now for that, we're the cure. WFG is the cure. You are the cure. WFG is a corporate entity. You're the cure. We've also had something else very dramatic happen to our company. The advance in our use of, virt of, of a virtual presentation, virtual meetings, virtual technology, I'm talking to people that typically have 30, 40 people in their BPMs at their office, and they're doing big Zoom BPMs now and have 700 people in them. Stunning numbers. And I'm just watching, now we gotta follow that up and we do all this stuff and we're working hard on that kind of thing. But this is the season of live communication. And I hope you get it. You know, you need to be zooming, zooming, zooming. I was talking to Raja, Dal Raja Dalliwal a couple of days ago, and he's doing 14 hours a day of Zoom calls. 14 hours a day. Last week, I was talking to him. He had recruited seven people that day personally. Zoom calls. Jazz, his, his amazing wife, held a call for the women in the organization um, uh, Saturday, and they had over 5,000 people on the Zoom call. 5,000. In fact, Jamie Vilova spoke in that one. And you just, you guys, this is an amazing time for us. I hate what's caused it, but I didn't cause it. I got no reason to feel guilty. I'm I, seriously, I'm almost embarrassed to tell people, people are, well, how are things going for you? And I'm like, geez, do I tell them or not? Right? It's like somebody said, are you, are you shut in your house? Well, yeah, I'm in this gorgeous house on 17 mile drive in Pebble Beach. Cindy and I just walked the entire golf course, all 18 holes at Pebble Beach because nobody's playing it. It's deserted. Just a handful of residents walking around, waving at each other. I got, I got the entire Pebble Beach resort as my yard. And now I'm almost embarrassed to tell you that. Then when somebody asked me about the business, I'm almost embarrassed to tell them how good it's going and how good it's going to be in these months and next several years. Please don't miss this moment. Don't miss what's really going on here and how crazy it is. See, we can't allow our team to live under the influence of fear. But that negative, what did I call that? An NG virus that 24 hour news puts out. Because we got so many reasons to be optimistic. So many blessings to count in our business model. What if we were having this experience in 2005 and we didn't have Zoom and we didn't have this technology and the internet isn't what it is today with high speed. We just be sitting around. We wouldn't be selling nothing. We wouldn't be up 50%. We'd be down 80. Because people wouldn't, wouldn't let you come into their home. You wouldn't want to go. Our part-timers would be immobilized. 
Now our part-timers are at home, most of them, right? And they can Zoom call their friends in their marketplace and they're home too right now, especially in California and these states. And both husband and wife are home if they're a couple. Now I can talk to both decision makers. I mean, is, look, 99% of my jobs, mentoring leadership, doing the kind of things I'm doing right now. But wow, I wish I, you know, there's part of me, I go back and I had these times with a base shop with this technology. I mean, I'd, I'd be trying to do 20 hours of Zoom calls a day until I literally just had to go lay down, right? And I'd be seeing people day and night. I'd do 10, 12 sales presentations sometime in a day, right? I'd do five, six closes in a day. I'd be doing one-on-one -on -one recruiting interviews. I'd be doing BPMs. We could do BPMs in the middle of the day. We could do BPMs at 10 in the morning. We could do BPMs at two in the afternoon because people are home. They're ready for a break. I'd be doing needs analysis after needs analysis after needs analysis after needs analysis to these people. Meanwhile, I'd be selling hope and opportunity and the dream and what's going on in a better life. We have the answers. We are the cure for a lot of what ails them right now, mentally and emotionally, financially. I'm so proud of this thing, the way we built it. But the people in the marketplace are listening more. And I tell you what, the ripple effect is going to go way past when we're all vaccinated and this, is, this thing is in our rearview mirror. Because this kind of time, this kind of time where people are freaking out like that, just like 2008, that lasts a couple of years. It impacts them. It's a lot easier for you to convince somebody right now they ought to be doing something that really could help people that could bring them a consistent cash flow of two, three, four grand extra a month even as part-time, they put together a little team, get some overrides, get some things going. Not only are they change the lives financially, a whole lot of wonderful people, they're gonna make some real income that they could save so they can get in a position when the next time something bad happens and other bad things will happen, just like there'll be other good things that happen. They'll be more ready. To a bunch of you who'd heard hear my voice right now, you've heard my voice before, where I've told you, pour it on, prepare, tough things are coming. The next one for us might be a big earthquake in California. All right, there may be other things. There will be other epidemics and certainly possibly pandemics. The question is, that might be fit, you know, just like 12 years from now, 10 years from now, four years from now. 20 years from now. All I know is I want to help as many people be prepared for whatever life throws at them. It could be them just losing their job or their business becoming obsolete. And they need to be ready. They need to be more secure. They need to have more money in savings in safer places. They need their families protected and they need real opportunity where they're in control. They need to be part of a business when things go bad, we still rock and roll. So I want to extend an 18 month challenge to all of you, right? That you treat your business as a total obsession for the next 18 months. Now I'm not talking about blow up your family or your marriage. I'm not talking about blow up your faith. I'm not talking about you letting your health go. I'm not a big believer in too much multitasking, but I can do faith, family and business and get some exercise like taking that hour and a half and walking that four miles today. I guess it wasn't an hour and a half, it's an hour and 15. And we stopped a few times to admire the sights. You can't walk that course and not do it. But it was a great walk, up some hills, down some hills. Best scenery in the world. This is, a, this is always acknowledged the most scenic golf course on the planet. And there's some pretty scenic golf courses. And this one's special. But that has nothing to do with treating your, your, <laughs> your business and treat moving your business as a total obsession. I'm talking about that slot of time in your life, that slot of energy in your life where you could move a business. 
Do you prioritize and simplify right now? Faith, family, business, almost nothing else. I don't want you mindlessly browsing the internet, having hobbies. You don't have sports. You can't even play any right now anyway. Just hanging out. Can't hang out, right? Watching TV. I want you to zero in and move this thing because this is going to be a golden season. You've heard Ed Milet talk recently. He says, I think that, right, that you could do experience like three or four or five years of moving ahead in just the next year. And I believe that too. So I think you need to zero in with a laser focus on prospecting and getting your team to prospect right now, more than ever. Train, role play on Zoom, make sure they have a few ideas about prospecting right now and using Zoom as a tool. You got to zero in a laser focus on recruiting and helping them to recruit. Great time to be role playing during the day. Some one on one recruiting stuff, some intriguing stuff, how to invite people to a to a online to a Zoom VPM. I want you to zero in with the laser's focus on field training and getting others to field train and making sure they understand we got, we ought to be training maniacs right now, role playing maniacs with people on technology, prospecting, getting on the prospect, recruiting, getting the team to recruit, field training, getting others to field train, licensing and getting others licensed. The state's reopened its licensing centers. There's a timing to it. This is a great time for people to get their hours out of the way, sitting around, they can just have the computer running, getting those hours, hours done. I want you to zero in with a laser focus on promotions and getting others promoted. Because I'm gonna extend a challenge to everybody on this. Everybody on this call, if you're in leadership, everybody on your team, everybody on your team ought to have a personal recruiting goal. There shouldn't be an active person in your organization that doesn't have pretty, a personal recruiting goal that you know what it is, right? The whole team knows what it is, and they've got some kind of simple plan to make it happen. And everybody on the team ought to know what their next promotion is, what they got to do to get it, have a deadline for it, and a simple plan to reach it. And everything you're doing and teach prospecting, recruiting, field training, licensing, promotions, and leadership development should be more aggressively ongoing right now than ever before. Than ever before. You can reach more people faster right now with what's happening with people at home and us having access to this technology. And it is, I tell you, it is time to rock the world with what WFG can do with this business platform, with our products and services, with our system, with our comp, everything we got going. Is this thing that's so terrible for so many business is like gold to us. And we need to make the most of it. All right, John, I'm going to turn it back over to you. All right. Oh, my God. Thank you, Rich, for jumping on and sharing with us your thoughts and what is going on. I want to ditto everything you said. I 150% I uh, agree with everything that uh, Rich, has, Rich has shared with all of you. And I hope that you guys really understand that this is a tremendous moment. And I want to just um, bring up a PowerPoint here just so you guys can see what we're talking about and the things that Rich was just talking about. I hope you guys can see my screen. Give me a second. So, um, again, on Tuesday next week, if you guys have anybody, like, guests, that uh, that need to make more money, as Rich has alluded to. This is a time for most people to start thinking about, you know, creating that second income, right, where they need to make more money, all right? And this is a, a great opportunity. And, you know, Rich was talking about these indexed annuities just momentarily ago, a moment ago, and, you know, these are great products. Uh, many people today that are getting laid off, um, you know, with the new CARES Act, there's opportunities where people can have access to their money inside their retirement accounts up to $100,000 without having to pay the penalties on it. And I just wanted to show you guys, for those of you that are uh, joining us here today, 
Um, I've been talking about this for the last week and a half or so, but you know, some of the things that people are looking for is, is guarantees. And if you sit here and you look at this, uh, there's a company out there called Athene offering a product called uh, Agility 10, where if you put in $10,000 at the minimum, but let's just say $100,000 as an example at 20%, they'll give you a 20% bonus up front. So you start off with $120,000, and then they, they give you 175%, that's like a multiplier. And for those people that don't want to participate in the market, like in this product, it offers you a 10% simple interest. And so uh, it is guaranteed for the next 10 years. And so um, these are the things that people don't know. People don't understand the, the, the products that are available today. Uh, Rich was talking about how many people would, would have loved to have saved more money. Uh, some people who, uh, in fact, today someone said to me, gosh, Sean, I wish I would have listened to you years ago and actually, um, you know, you know, you know, built up a better food supply and not have to panic at the last minute trying to go to different stores and buy different, you know, products for their family. Um, listen, this is the time to seize the moment, not when, you know, when this all starts to maybe subside, where now all of a sudden you, what you were going to do, you didn't do, and then you wait for the next big pandemic or some outbreak or some other emergency. And, you know, it's interesting that Rich said, um, you know, can you imagine if we, we live in California, for those of you that are dialing in from all over the country, and we're prone to have earthquakes here, and many of you have other natural disasters. But my God, if we had a, a, a big earthquake today, what, what would that do? I mean, we just pray every day that that doesn't happen. But again, these are the things that people don't know. People are financially illiterate. And this is one of the reasons why most people don't have any money. They're, they're business illiterate. They're financially illiterate. And I've been pr uh, talking about these products over the last week and a half. Just to kind of give you an idea, uh, the money that you can make on this, sitting at your home right now, um, on an average rollover of $100,000, the commission payout is 5%, you make $5,000, and our firm pays you on average, let's say 50%, you're making $2,500. Not, not too bad, all right, not too bad. But you gotta be licensed. We can't pay you this without having you uh, get licensed. And for a while, we were, I was a little bit concerned about getting new people on board because people were excited, like, John, this is great. I wanna talk to a whole bunch of people about licensing and so here, just a couple days ago, they said uh, uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays with very limited seating that some of these uh, locations are now available where you can actually go in and, uh, uh, and get your license. So it's very important that you uh, let your teammates know and people that are looking for more money, uh, they, they can start the licensing process right now. The exam fee is $88 at a PSI testing center. Uh, there is a convenience charge, maybe that's for masks, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, exam fee, uh, there's an additional fee of $33, and all you gotta do is go down to the site of candidate that uh, dot psi exams dot com so let's get our licensing moving again so we can get our, our people that want to make more money making money uh, there are other testing centers a little bit less expensive without the convenience charge fee uh, this, these are state locations testing centers there's one here in downtown los angeles and uh, again here there is no 33 dollar convenience fee so again here you can go to that same location at candidate.psiexams.com and you can get yourself uh, registered and take your exam um, i just want you guys to know that a lot of people are saying you know as, as, as rich alluded to that this is you know, it's just like 24 seven. It's like you're watching all the news. I mean, whether it's Fox news or MSNBC or CNN or channel two, four, seven, 11, 13, nine, every channel is just talking about negativity. And, you know, as, as Rich just alluded to that, that is a virus in itself. You gluing yourself to TV and watching all this nonsense. This is a red thing. This is a blue thing. Let me just tell you where I stand with this, okay? This is not a red or blue thing, but it's a red, white, and blue thing. I have a responsibility to go out there and help people understand what they don't know to get people to calm down just a bit, right? Or in some cases, quite a bit, okay? 
So I want you to know that we're all here, and, and, and those of you that are out there right now, I really, uh, your family members that are in the first responders that are, you know, in harm's way, right? Whether it was our military, uh, whether it's, you know, doctors, nurses, every single one of you that are out there, for those of you that have family members that are working in the grocery stores, let them know we are so grateful for them and have them be safe, extra safe. And uh, next week, I just want you guys to tune in on Saturday. We're going to do some additional training, some of the things that you could be doing right now uh, in how we're generating business. I I'm telling you, just as Raj Adaliwal uh, is extremely busy today, Janie Villalobos, I was talking to her the other day, and she's just like, oh, my God, it's like busier now than ever. I am literally in this chair with this background talking 14, 15, 18 hours a day nonstop. I feel like I'm working harder today than ever before, and uh, it's great for us, I mean, from a business standpoint. But uh, log into this site on Saturday, this coming Saturday. We're going to do some additional training for you guys. And then, of course, uh, next Tuesday, we have a phenomenal young lady. Um, her name is uh, Fredo Barber in the East Coast. She's right there in the heart of the epicenter in Brooklyn, New York right now. Um, just, you know, we're getting updates from her so that I get the real truth and not from the media. And she's giving us some updates. But I want you to know her business is also exploding right now. And what is she doing right now? Because uh, she might have a record month here uh, this month. So uh, she's going to talk to you guys about what she's doing and how she's reaching out to people in her community. So I just wanted you guys to know all that. We appreciate you guys being on this uh, webinar tonight, and I'm so grateful you guys had a chance to hear from Rich Dolly. And so we just uh, wish you guys all the best. Uh, Arlene and I, I know that Rich and Cindy, every single one of us, we're praying for you on a daily, pace, on a daily basis. We're thinking about you, and you are in our hearts and in our minds every single day. So uh, as you guys continue to go out there and lead the charge, Make sure that you guys uh, don't panic, right? That's the most important thing is don't panic. And uh, again, uh, as, as you've been hearing a lot of leaders say that this pandemic is another one that shall pass. And we look forward to seeing you guys uh, n this coming Saturday. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Take care and be blessed. And Rich, if you're still on, thank you so much for joining us and being on the uh, webinar. Right. Thank you. We love you.